few things that, that will come together in this presentation. Uh, my university, our approach to teaching and learning, our technology-enabled learning, as well as team-based learning. So let me peel it like an onion. Um, this one. Just to introduce my university, it is the number one ranked uh, uh, under 50 uh, university. It's currently number, what are we now? Uh, Times Higher Education number 55. So um, it's sort of, a, a, it, it gives a context of the, the ambition that the university has. It's the fastest rising university in history. Uh, we were number 130 something only four years ago, and now we're number uh, 55. And the government is throwing a lot of resources to make sure that uh, we're already number two in Asia. The number one in Asia is also a Singaporean university. National University of Singapore. So having surpassed Japan and China is a big accomplishment, and Hong Kong and Korea. So we want to maintain that, and because of that, uh, not only is it, not not only is this the reason, but also uh, being a technological university, we we wanted to make sure that the, the the students are technologically ahead when it comes to education. So we were thinking of doing a a, a big shift into. Uh, not just ad hoc conversion of, of, of um, uh, modules into hybrid uh, courses, but rather uh, a more focused and how, how would they say, uh, a, a thematic conversion of uh, our courses. Um, the thing is we wanted to use uh, specific programs in our conversion before we release it into the <clears throat> mainstream. So we started with uh, the medical school, we started with the Renaissance Engineering Program. These are highly um, premium uh, programs where the students are, are, are selected based on their academic performance. The third uh, stop for this uh, experiment is the University Scholars Program, which is the liberal arts program of the university. Um, the, the, there are some problems that I'd like to ask you maybe for help, actually, because that's the reason we haven't implemented it in the liberal arts. We're implementing it this August. And, um, and, and I'm stumped because I, my, my, my background is in medicine as well as in, in and, and we implemented it in engineering where the answers in our programs are, can be answered A, B, C, D. And now we're in liberal arts, which is a bit more difficult. Um, going back, this is the big program that we have. It's called Technology Enabled Learning. Um, see, we even created a, uh, a logo, can you imagine? Um, it aims to convert our 3,000 modules, half of it, 1,500, into some sort of online hybrid, uh, um, hybrid blended learning uh, kind of pedagogy within five years. So if you divide that 1,500, that's 300 modules will be converted a year. And it's backed by $50, 50 million dollars worth of investment, including hardware and, uh, and, 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 and software. Um, I would like to focus on my definite, uh, my, my subset of team-based learning because I'm the chief advocate of team-based learning in our school, in our university. So even if I'm employed by the medical school, half of my work is actually to, to teach the professors of the university how to use team-based learning. Um, have you heard of team-based learning as it's been used in, in, in many universities? Okay, good. So this is the timeline so far of what we've had. Uh, in, in terms of uh, team-based learning, LKC Medicine is 100% on TBL. There are no lectures whatsoever. Of course, there's still clinics and there's still laboratories in the medical school, but all the lectures are front-loaded online, and it can be downloaded on the iPad, and, um, which we give to the students for free. And uh, um, once they are in the classroom, the face-to-face -face is actually one whole day class where it's all assessment. The first portion of the the first portion of the assessment is whether they have read or seen the videos that we have uploaded for them uh, two weeks ahead. And then there's a series of clinical cases that follow after that. In the Renaissance Engineering Program, uh, again, it's a premium program for engineers. Um, we only applied it on the first two years because on the third year, we sent them overseas. Mm -hmm. all, the pro all the people in Renaissance Engineering Program spent at least a semester or a year either in Berkeley or in Imperial College, and now we've included Northwestern. So the, the, the investment on the students is very high. 
in the University Scholars Program, it's the liberal arts, everyone who uh, qualifies um, has a specific, uh, they, they're given privileges in terms of monetary compensation or reimbursements of their tuition fees, um, dormitories, as well as a special program where they can select from an elective of about 200 different liberal arts programs that also includes uh, some, uh, some science and mathematics programs. And we have a CNN scholarship, which we will do in 2017. Um, team-based learning is a very specific sequence of pedagogy. It's not just because you're in a team, it's team-based learning. It's not. Uh, we, we upload, uh, we upload the, the preparatory materials two weeks ahead, and when you come in, I'll show you what happens um, later on. But it needs the professors to be trained, and I'm the one who trained the professors. Usually, it's a two-and-a-half-day um, boot camp, and as I earlier related to my, 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 my colleagues in the workshop in the morning, I do it in a five-star hotel <laughs> to make sure that there, there's attendance. Every, every boot camp is about 20 to 25 selected professors, but they are required to convert their courses into team-based learning. It's a requirement. After they finish, they have a certificate of attendance, but if they want the certificate of TBL practice, I will have to come in, troubleshoot, they have to allow me to give them feedback, and then they will have to do a focus group of uh, discussion with their students to hear what the students um, uh, say about the course, and they have to present in a, in a conference that we do only for the, for the internally for the, for the professors of my university, so they are given the stage. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, they have to share their experiences. And they have to reflect in front of their colleagues what worked and what didn't work. <clears throat> of course, we also have to uh, retrofit physical spaces. Not only did we retrofit, we, we built a building uh, uh, designed by a star architect, the one who designed uh, the London Olympics cauldron. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the brief of the building is there are no useless corners. So you can see now it all, all became round, right? <laughs> the building is called the Hive, although the students call it the dim sum. It looks like, a, 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 it looks like a, the dim sum baskets, right? But it's, it's officially called the Hive. And this is the classroom. So every table has a monitor and, and they're all, uh, and you can do airplane. Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic building. We're building a second one, but it's a different design. It's a butterfly. I don't know where they get all this <laughs> Not that it improves the outcomes. We provide, uh, we provide devices. Not only do we provide devices such as iPad, uh, but in the medical school, for example, which is our prototype, our Wi-Fi system can accommodate a thousand simultaneous connections in the room. And it is connected by a 10 gigabyte fiber. Why? Because the, 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 the iPad continuously interacts with the, with the cloud because you're uploading your answers, you're downloading new materials every three seconds. Uh, the, the, your, your answers are fed back into the system at that particular rate. Um, and, uh, and of course, every student, uh, the, the classroom can accommodate 300, but it's 1,000 because every student would bring an iPad, an iPhone, and a laptop. So <laughs> we don't want it to get clogged, right? So this is the methodology of TBL. The first one is the learning resources where the, the professors you know, either record their materials or they create a series of activities, or they upload a PDF file, uh, whatever. And we uh, recommend that this be released to the students one week to two weeks ahead, not more. There's a competing university that releases everything within uh, for, uh, at the start of the semester. Our students are obsessive compulsive, particularly the medical students and the Renaissance engineers. Why? Because they come in because they're very, very good students. <laughs> if you give them one semester's worth of materials, they would have gone through it by the first week. And then they're, they're all walking like zombies because they haven't slept, because they've seen all the videos. And it's not very good use of their time because by the time you're on the 10th week, they, put up, they would have forgotten everything, right? So we release it in series. And then uh, this is one of the things that we created. It's an, it's an, app, uh, it's an Apple application. It's an Apple app. It looks like a bookshelf. So year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. This appears actually. This is some business and in, in, in engineering. So you can see some of the some of the uh, topics, right? And it appears like this is a bookshelf. Once they click it, the reason why we did this instead of putting it in Blackboard, which is our uh, backup, 
these materials are also uploaded in Blackboard. In Blackboard, you can only watch it when you're tethered to the Wi-Fi. It's a continuous streaming. What happens here is it downloads permanently into your iPad. You can delete it if you want, but what happens is you can learn mobile. You can watch, uh, you can watch the video, read the materials while you're in the bus, wherever you are. It doesn't matter. So that's the big advantage. Um, there's a talking head. We removed this already. We don't like talking heads. Students don't like talking heads. They would rather have a professor, you know, being filmed in front of an interactive uh, board rather than a talking head. Okay, from this point onwards, everything happens in the classroom. So that doesn't happen in the classroom. But in the classroom, it's a face-to-face -face with a particular with with the with the seminar-style seating uh, round tables, but. All the materials are still being streamed on, time, on real time online. So this is the first part, which is called the individual readiness assessment, where the students actually take the quiz regarding the preparatory materials that were sent to them. See, individually, there's no talking. It's very quiet when this part happens. And also, it, it also implicitly enforces discipline. If you're late, you don't get to do your eye. So everyone comes on time. How long do they take? Uh, depends on how long your question is. In engineering, the entire class is about three hours. In medicine, it's one whole day. Mm -hmm. One TBL session is one day. Their IRA and TIRA and burning questions portion uh, is about three hours. And clinical cases are in the afternoon. In engineering, it's about maybe 30 minutes, maybe 15 minutes for the IRA and another 15 minutes. You don't need to ask many questions. You just need to ask well-distributed questions to make sure that they have gone through all the materials. It's individual readiness assurance rather than assessment. Um, then we repeat exactly the same questions, exactly the same. But they will have to be in a team. What happens is our system will disable all of the iPads except for one, which is a rotating thing because everyone has to be a leader one time. Okay, why this person's iPad is the only one that works. This person's iPad is the only one that can key in the answer. He has to negotiate with the rest of the team. Leadership, negotiation skills uh, will have to be practiced. Influence, you know. Um, so this is, see, it's exactly the same except that they're talking. Only one of the iPads is working. And one of the key things is that we can actually you can get a, a, a wrong answer, you can give a wrong answer, and you can retry. You have to retry. We believe that there is a learning uh, that happens when you get an immediate feedback that your answer is wrong. Okay? Somebody's loud voice in the team, no? like my voice, right? I would always trump the, the right answer even if I, my answer is wrong. After the second time that my answer or third time and you know, they won't listen to me anymore, right? So, and that's part of uh, real life skills that you learn. You know, you, you, you get to identify the strength and the weaknesses of your team. Um, and then you get the right answer. This of course doesn't carry the same weight as if you got the right answer the first time. It's actually four, two, one, zero, okay? But it's uh, immediate feedback is very important. <coughs> Now, you raised the issue about teams. These are semi-permanent teams. They are permanently together for a semester. We tried it for a year. Then we did a research. It doesn't matter whether it's a year or, or uh, a semester. Team formation, they become a team. Uh, from group, they become a team on the seventh week. On the seventh week. So we, we studied their, 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 their feedback on how well they know their teammates. And we know that on the seventh, uh, on the seventh week, they, they are already in the team. So in order for us to maximize meeting other people on the next semester, we will reform their teams. Oh, uh, by the way, I, the, 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 the question there, the, the picture there is actually a video. We can embed a video uh, inside the question. So it's like a Harry Potter you know, picture where it's moving and you can ask a question. That's a very big advantage over pen and paper. Um, and then there's actually a portion here between TIRA and AD called the burning questions. We have the burning questions. The students can ask um, extremely, extremely important questions before we go into application exercises. The professors can answer those things or he can ask the, the other teams to answer. Okay? 
Well, Application exercises uh, for the liberal arts is my big question. What happens in, in team-based learning is that um, it imposes four, questions, four uh, requirements for the application exercises. They have to be the same problem, significant problem, and the answers have to be revealed simultaneously, and there has to be a specific choice. Specific choice is where I trip. How can I give a specific choice when your answer is a 500-word uh, essay? There's no specific choice for that. So I might need to ask your help for that. See, in the application exercises, you see those letters? Usually it's multiple choice. Even in engineering, uh, they have the size of bridges. Under which condition, which bridge will, start, uh, will, will, will be the strongest under a certain condition? So they can ask design questions even as multiple choice questions. In medicine, it's the same. Uh, the USMLE has always been tested on a multiple choice platform. Okay, so now we actually are in earmarking team-based learning to in three out of four core modules, but uh, at least another five have come on board. So it's going to be slow, but 50% uh, of all electives will be in technology-enabled learning. Again, my main challenge, specific choice. Now, this is my, my, my question I'll pose to you. What is the best way to approach discussions that are typically open-ended into one which recommends answering with specific choice? Okay, that's my... Uh, we were thinking about it. I called some of the liberal arts professors and I threw this question and they said, maybe we should allow gray options rather than just black and white. Uh, maybe we should ask for longer contextual MCQ questions, for example. Uh, like which paragraph among which particular treatise actually talks about this particular principle, something like that. Um, and then we have an exemplar where field research has come up with an example. Um, in, in field research, where they go overseas actually, what, she, what the professor intends to do is to send all the materials, and at the beginning of the, the research, before the students go on surveying, she will do an IRA tira, the, 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 the quiz, and then she will let the students go on uh, to do their surveys, and then she will, the students will come back, and then she will, she will ask them the question, so what are, what are the difficult things that you encountered? Whatever the feedback is, she will then create an application exercise on the spot regarding how do you address this particular difficulties. You know, the, the, your, your clients, your customers don't want to talk to you. Uh, you know, uh, the people are not cooperative in your survey. So she will do a, an application exercise based on what's happening on the ground. It's a real-time um, real dynamic application exercise. I was, uh, this is a, a bonus, uh, it's an add-on on what we know so far based on the non-liberal uh, non arts, uh, uh, non arts discipline. What we know is, um, this is our scholarship, this is the basis of our research. I'll just walk you through what we found. Uh, the students like team-based learning because of the autonomy. Because you can read as much as you want, you can answer as much as you want, um, and, and if you don't want to read, then you come in unprepared. Your teammates will be the ones to punish you because you don't come prepared. You don't contribute, right? Uh, it's very effective, and learning is more consistent because you learn to read every day instead of, um, instead of just before a big exam. Um, and because we discuss in our team rather than the professor telling us we are wrong, we discover we are wrong with a machine. It's more friendly than if, uh, you know, uh, an embarrassing situation where you raise your hands and everyone knows that you're wrong. Okay? Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, these are some of their findings. Uh, they say it's more modern. They can internalize knowledge better. It's more participative. This is team-based learning compared to other courses. What I have yet to see in a team-based learning session is I have yet to see a sleeping student. Really, I haven't seen that. So that's um, now with regards to the student and teacher perception. I thought everything was working fine. This is a very good last slide. Um, the students find it very engaging, but there's too much material. Why? Because the professors converted his or her three-hour lecture into the three-hour video material to be sent to the students. Not good. You have to really make sure it's chunked into about 15, 20 minutes. The professors do not like it, 
So we let them fail. This is what I said. Okay, let them fail the first time. When did the professors encounter the evaluation? The next year he will improve. <laughs> um, students come better prepared according to the according to the teachers. Um, but there's also the teachers are also tasked. The first run is very difficult for the professors, and we prepare them for that. And the first run, the students do not like team-based learning at the beginning. Within the first two weeks, they will be writing to the director, to the dean, why are we being put under this particular pedagogy? You know why? Remember the students scored very highly, that's why they're in the program. They scored very highly on, on didactics and lectures. So when, it's, when they have take control of their lives, they don't like it, right? Um, and, and this is a phenomenon that I just heard. It's not yet written in the books. I'd like to write about it. There's masking. Still, weaker students get masked by stronger students. Because as a team, uh, they, will, they will save their teammates, which is not necessarily good. Okay? Um, we know that the, 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 the teamwork quality improves over time. On the seventh week, it's already set. It, it, it improves academic performance if your team is big, if diverse, you know, uh, with mediocre students and good students. If it's a scholarship program where it's everyone is good, there's no improvement. How do you measure the improvement of 97.8 to a 98.1? There's no, it's very difficult, right? We don't use, and we are very conscious, we don't use team-based learning for improvement of academic performance. We use it so that you can learn leadership, negotiation, teamwork, and how to influence others. Because they're already in the scholarship programs, right? Yeah, so that's it. Okay. If anybody has a burning question for Actually, them. Actually, I have their, I have a burning question for them, right? So, <laughs> that's right. but yes, sir. Answer. Right, um, fascinating talk. Uh, the, I saw the image of the classroom had a professor-looking person standing and, yeah. other, and students holding up cards. Um, what is the professor's role in the classroom? Okay, uh, again, one of my most difficult tasks is to convince the professor that he's no longer the master of the classroom. So uh, he is um, a facilitator and a content expert. Those are the two things that he has to play. He, is, he facilitates the class, but also he has to be a content expert, particularly contentious issues where the students are free to go online. In the application exercise, it's an open book, open online uh, portion, and the students can always find contradictory findings, particularly in medicine. What is the right dose for with this particular disease? There will always be uh, two, at least two researches that have contradictory uh, results. So you'll have to be the content expert to judge which one is correct, which one is not. Anything else, yes? How many meetings a week? I mean, what is the plan? For, for engineering, it's 12 uh, week semester mm -hmm. of three hours. Uh, for medicine, it's one whole year. Uh, it's on a yearly basis, 72 in a year. Twice a week for 36 weeks. I'm a TBL instructor, and so I've taught it for around four years um, to a few different classes. And I found in the beginning that blended learning and team-based learning, I mean, they go well together. I think in the ideal uh, situations, you would you, you, you would very much blend part of your class more with a flipped concept, right? Like a lot of your content that you would have in lectures, you can create in modules and have that online, so you have a lot more time for people to work in teams and something to problems on in your class. Um, but I'm in an English department, and my classes are the atypical of their media studies classes in the English department. I need to talk to you. Okay. And so, uh, <laughs> so I'm doing it from a humanities perspective, which gave me some uh, unique challenges, I think, in doing some of the assessments that are typical of all team-based. But the real issue was just the time investment in building the class and putting the content online. So when I was pre-tenure, I decided that it wasn't worthwhile for, for me to blend that side of my class. And so I kind of left it where I did small modules in class. But it works well in a seminar format where you have a longer class session and you have some content that you still deliver and get in a more traditional format, but the rest of the class is spent with mm -hmm. in a TBL, more standard sort of TBL structure. But either way, I say that you know it's been life changing to try that structure. 
and to, uh, I, I really wouldn't want to teach it in any way. But you have to have the physical environment to complement it, just as you showed. I mean, we have those TVO rooms with the circular desk and the laptops there. Uh, and I couldn't imagine teaching it in a more traditional classroom environment. Um, it's really a, a situation where the pedagogy and the physical space must match in order to be successful. We have one most challenging course, chemistry in everyday life. 350 students in a five, I requested for a 500 seater theater. Because this, okay, uh, 